So I got myself a really tricky situation here. I got this old Parks planer with an in-feed roller right here, and then the planer head, and then the out-feed rollers under here. In the gearbox, the in-feed and the out-feed roller is connected via chain. There's a little chain right there. It looks like a bicycle chain. And uh, the main uh, the main gear header, at the gear cutter, is connected via V-belt from the motor down there up to here, then into the gearbox. Now, the problem is that the way that this is designed, the roller goes right through a cast iron um, block on the right and one on the left. And I cannot lift this roller up or down. It has to come out this way, all the way out. But I can't do that because the gearbox slot is just tiny. And the little shield over here is is got a three quarter inch hole around the shaft. So this gear has to come off. But unfortunately, the set screw got completely marred um, well the set screw messed up the shaft and it created a bunch of shavings most likely it wasn't tightened enough and so uh, the infeed roller stopped and the gear kept going and it completely messed up the shaft and now I can't press this uh, this thing out now I could probably cut it in half flip it around do the other half and then just discard the gear but it is an original probably about 40 years old I'm restoring this for a guy who has got very uh, dear sentimental uh, value to it. It's his grandfather's that he wants uh, rebuilt. So anyway, so what I'm going to try to do is I made this contraption here. Because I can't go in here with a gear puller. I can't use a press because I can't even take the whole gearbox off and put it on my shop press. So I used a half inch plate and I made a three quarter inch hole. And what I'm going to do is I attached, I used half inch by 20 fine threaded bolts and I tie it together here and then this one here will push across. So as I go like this, it will squeeze the bottom together. So I'm going to have one, one end sitting on my shaft right here and one hooking into the, uh, the gear in the back and hopefully I should be able to squeeze it together and push that off no idea if it's going to work this is the last resort if it's not going to work i'm going to have to split the split the gear and replace it with a new one so we'll see how it goes i'll bring you back when i'm done nope it was a no-go all it did is it literally bent this half inch plate of steel i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna try one more thing i'll put a little bit of a spacer in between here to see if I can get a little bit more leverage because I'm running out of a thread over here. Uh, see if that'll make a difference, but to be honest, I think it's just going to bend that plate even more. Here's a spacer I put in right there. I was hoping maybe I'd get a little bit more leverage out of it, but it just bent the half inch plate. So I guess that's it. I'm going to have to cut that sucker in half. I'm totally surprised. It actually moved. I wanted to see how I could cut this thing in half, and I noticed that there's a bit of a bit of a gap in between there right at the tip of my finger so I looked over here and it moved holy it actually worked so I guess I'm gonna put that thing back on and I'm gonna see if I can work that thing all the way out and I might have to get creative put some spacers in to push through like push the shaft through but uh, this might actually work all right, and so this is the reason why that sucker was stuck on there. So they just kind of used an angle grinder and uh, shaved off a little bit of a platform, like a little bit of a bevel there for the set screw, and then they put it in, and it must have gotten stuck, and it just slammed the set screw in here until it got so bad, until it just marred itself so bad that it got caught inside the... Uh, the gear you can see there that's just a metal shavings just jamming itself in there no wonder i wasn't able to get that sucker off so anyway so what i'm going to do is i'll take this and put it in the put it in the lathe and 
It looks like several people have tried to get this off before, judging by the marks there. So I'll put it in the lathe and clean it up and then take the shaft and I'll probably build it up and uh, turn it down, back down nice and smooth. And then I'll machine a real good surface in there. I might even put a keyway and we'll have to see how it goes. So yeah, so the tool did the job. I did not think I was gonna work because I had such a limited space. Um, and it, brought, it, bent the, it bent the bolt a little bit there. You can see this one here has a, got a bit of a curve, but it's just mild steel. I had to use a makeshift. The guys gave me the wrong bolt, so I was gonna, I ordered some hat, or I picked up some half inch 20s, but they ended up giving me half inch 13s, the coarse threaded. So I ended up making my own just with a steel rod, mild steel. And I welded a, a nut on each end here. And uh, yeah, that did the trick. So I am really glad. Now, I'm going to have to try to get this gear out. Because that one's just as bad. With the only disadvantage is I can't get behind it to grab it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have to do something similar and hook it in here and here. But then this gear is going to be in the way as well. So... But that's going to be a problem for another day. For tonight, I think mission accomplished. I'm super impressed that I got it off. And I'm one step closer to disassembling this beast. Okay, so I do have to show you this setup. Finally got the box out. And uh, here's the planer knife. What I ended up doing is I put a gear puller set right there around the shaft. Um, the bearing is underneath it, so I don't want to press on the bearing. But the little knob there that you can see sticking out, that's solid aluminum, which will go right into where the gear sits. So there's plenty of uh, support there. So I supported the uh, gear puller with these two one-inch pieces, the red ones, on left and the right. And then I put a little socket, a little nine millimeter socket on top of the shaft, which is thin enough to push the shaft down. Then I built up a little ramp on the right here with a two two inch plates and two quarter inch plates. And then a bridge between the right support and the left support, which sits on that socket. And I'm pressing right down in the middle with the shop press. So, what that does eventually, essentially, is that this part is not going to move and the only place it can go is down and it'll push down on the inside of the shaft and the red pieces support the, the case um, holding it up and so it will, it will push the shaft down and it actually worked. So I don't think I'm going to be able to show you. At the same time as I'm fil filming that I'm that I'm gonna try, so I'll grab my uh, my bar here, and as I'm pressing, let's see if I can shine a light on that. As I'm pressing, come on, it actually pushes it down. I don't want to go anymore because I want to support the cutter head. I don't want that dropping on the ground. But uh, man, I didn't think that would work, but it did.